today I will defend my thesis. Uh, my, first, my thesis topic is uh, shown here, the big data analysis of complex networks using machine learning methods. And my supervisor is Dr. Zhu Han. And thank you for being here as my committee member. So this is the outline of my today's presentation. So first I will give introduction and uh, motivations of my work. It comprises of three parts. Uh, first one will be the big data. Second, second one will be the machine learning. And the third one will be a small grid and research activity. So the motivation is that the, the energy user data analysis uh, where the machine learning and uh, we all want to design the pricing scheme and uh, propose a big data solution. So uh, there are uh, there are many three uh, parts of my research work. So first one is uh, regarding to uh, user pattern recognition. So for this part, we will propose the work of uh, probabilistic clustering analysis of load profiling for big smart meter data. And the second one is regarding the pricing and sampling method. Uh, we will analyze the big smart data towards uh, differentiating user surfaces. And we, we will use a sublinear approach uh, to uh, facilitate the computation. And for the third mm -hmm. part, we will perform the trajectory analysis. Uh, mm -hmm. We will propose the tensor voting framework and uh, discuss the, its application in the mobile trace inference. And uh, I will discuss some future work and uh, timeline at the end. So, uh, so now I will summarize my uh, dissertation contributions. So first is uh, theoretical contributions. Uh, so first, I propose a novel iterative uh, probabilistic clustering algorithm both, uh, based on the modified mahalan lobis distance. And second, I propose a new strong separation index to characterize the separability of the uh, clustering performance. And third, I, perform, I propose a differentiating user services model for pricing uh, electricity usage. And, for, and the fourth, I propose a, a, new, a normal sublinear algorithm uh, with both theoretically proof and uh, application validation. So uh, for the application contributions, I applied the tensor voting theory into the trajectory inference, and I applied the fractal dimension analysis for the feature extraction in the trajectory analysis. So uh, I will give an uh, introduction for the big data. So as we all, as we all know, uh, now comes the uh, er area of uh, big data. And it has uh, three key uh, components, uh, variety, velocity, and volume. And uh, there are a lot of uh, business going uh, with uh, big data issues. And um, speaking of uh, data analysis, we are uh, mainly focused on the two major tasks. One is the classification, the second is the prediction. So uh, the machine learning is a popular tool to, to be used for the data analysis task. And it can be categorized as the three main uh, classes. First one is uh, referred to as uh, supervised learning, such as uh, SVM, support vector machine deep learning, and so forth. Second one is referred to the unsupervised learning. Uh, it contains clustering, mean shift, KNN, and uh, non parametric relation, and so forth. The third one referred to as uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, it contains uh, such as uh, active learning, semi supervised learning, and so forth. So the bottom two pictures shows the uh, difference between the supervised learning and the unsupervised learning. Uh, for the supervised learning, we have the input data with uh, different labels, and the labels are known. So the task is to find the classifiers to separate these two uh, data class. And for the unsupervised learning on the right-hand side figure, so our input data has no labels. So we have to, uh, uh, to learn the underlying structure of the uh, inherent data structure. To, dis to distinguish the data groups. And uh, the motivations for, the, for my research on uh, smart meter fields uh, is, uh, is to first understand the electricity user's behavior and then develop the algorithm for online user classification and uh, design the pricing scheme accordingly. And for the trajectory analysis, uh, well, it, it, has more and it has emerging more and more lo location services based on the personal device, devices, such as the smart, smartphone. And uh, it has uh, applications on the security issues, such as the uh, location of the missing flights, and so forth. So um, there are several challenges uh, regarding my research uh, topics. 
First is how to extract the typical user behavior based on proper feature extraction. Second is uh, how to enable user classification under the big data con context. Third is how to infer a complete trajectory and uh, recognize different trajectory patterns. And uh, accordingly, we propose uh, three solutions. One is, uh, one is uh, the probabilistic clustering based on the modified Mahalanobis distance. The second one is uh, profile classification based on sublinear algorithms. The third one is the tensor voting frame uh, framework uh, combined with uh, supervised learning. So now I will begin with uh, probabilistic clustering analysis. So the data set we have is uh, smart meter data from the utility company collected over the entire Houston city area. It contains over 2 million users. And the data sam sampling frequency is uh, 15 minutes uh, per sample. And uh, the data is recorded from uh, 2013 and to 2014. And the data set is over 150 gigabytes. So on the right hand side picture, it shows um, several typical load profiles of the electricity users. As we can see, some of the users are mainly uh, day daytime users. So they are consumption uh, mainly focused during the daytime. And some of them, uh, like the purple one, they mainly consume their energy uh, during the breakfast time and the uh, night. So the problem is how to how, how can we uh, identify how many typical clusters are there and uh, what are their typical patterns. So first, we propose uh, data compression by uh, using some key pragmatic features. So we define the total daily consumption, nighttime consumption, daytime consumption, and the evening consumption, uh, respectively, uh, according to the human activity nature. And then we uh, normalize them uh, by, dividing, by, dividing, uh, by dividing them with uh, total daily consumption. And then we perform the PCA to, to, the, to these pragmatic features, since we need uh, those features to be uh, decorrelated for the modified Mahana Lobis distance, as we will see later. And then we use this um, transformed uh, feature point as the input, uh, input data points x. Then we formulate the class, uh, clustering problem. So uh, suppose we have known the number of the clusters as n, and the total data points is uh, n. And uh, we have the cluster indicator Z and then as um, binary uh, values to indicate whether the uh, nth cluster belongs to the m's, uh, nth data point belongs to the uh, m's cluster. And then we calculate the total within cluster scatter as given in this formula. And uh, the function d is the distance measure between the testing data point xn to the testing centroid om. So our clustering objective is to minimize the uh, uh, total within scatter uh, with respect to the cluster indicator matrix. And uh, traditional, uh, def traditional employment of the uh, distance measure is uh, to use uh, 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 Euclidean distance, but it has uh, several disadvantages, such as uh, it uh, emphasizes each dimension of the input and it does not uh, consider the scatter of the each uh, cluster form. So, Thus, we propose the um, Mahana Lobis distance with a regular, uh, regularizer uh, at the end. So, this, uh, uh, as we can see, the distance measurement uh, function here comp comprises of two parts. First one is uh, uh, it's just a, a basic uh, traditional Mahana Lobis distance. And the second one is the determinant of the covariance matrix of the mth cluster. So, it measures um, uh, the, the the linear, uh, linearity dependent. So if the, if the data point in M's cluster, they are more uh, correlated, meaning, uh, meaning that their patterns are more similar, then this one will be smaller. Then it inclines to cluster the data point to that uh, cluster. So uh, to solve the clustering problem, we propose the uh, algorithm uh, as the following. So it's, uh, it's uh, in the fashion of the Niloid uh, uh, Elo is a uh, uh, algorithm. So first, we will initialize the centroid of each cluster, and uh, they are randomly selected. And then we map uh, feature points to assign to the uh, ith cluster if uh, its uh, distance to the ith centroid is the uh, smallest one. And then the centroids are updated after all the uh, data points are mapped uh, for, for the first round. Then we keep uh, iterating all these uh, procedures until all the, data, uh, all the data points are mapped. So uh, until, the, uh, until the stable uh, 
and uh, until the cluster reach, achieves the stable structure and uh, the stopping rule are, satis are satisfied. So we propose several stopping rules, and uh, for the first stopping rule, we propose uh, we name it as a cluster ring shift. So uh, we calculate the set. Uh, we calculate the size of the set difference between the two successive iterations of the same cluster M, and uh, name it as a delta M K, and divided by the cardinality of the M's same cluster generated at the case iteration. So it is a, a percent, percentage, percentile. And uh, we take the maximum of uh, over all the M clusters to, to, to be the value of the clustering shift. And uh, we also propose some uh, 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 quality, uh, quality index. We call them a uh, strong separation index to measure the quality of our perf uh, clustering performance. So this, uh, this quality is uh, derived from the uh, probabilistic point of view. So uh, we just uh, measure all the data points uh, to, the, to this current, to its uh, current uh, cluster and uh, build the CDF of the distance. And then we test each of uh, alien points from uh, other clusters to the uh, to current cluster to see the CDF. So, uh, we take the maximum of this uh, uh, this mutual uh, this mutual function s, and then we name it uh, the uh, strong separation index. So the small se strong separation index, uh, the better. So which means the alien data point is uh, less uh, less likely to be belong to current uh, cluster, which means the uh, two clusters are well separated, and. Uh, we propose the overall algorithm as here. So the first, we do the data pre-processing to, uh, to the corrupted uh, recordings. And then we extract the pragmatic features. And then we use the uh, total daily consumption uh, oh. to fit the Gaussian mixture model to uh, split the user groups and uh, to, uh, to perform the outside detection at the final level. And then we perform the PCA to the decorrelated uh, pragmatic features. And then we use the iterative uh, uh, probabilistic clustering with a modified Mahanalobis distance. And finally, we, uh, when the stopping rules are satisfied, we compute the quality of uh, terminal clustering by the strong separation index. So what if you expect to what is what are the groups of the clustering? Yeah, so uh, we what are the outliers? Yeah, we just uh, detect some outliers and we throw the outliers, and uh, we have two major groups uh, after the Gaussian uh, uh, Gaussian mixture model. Then we we keep the, those main body of the users, and we perform the clustering. Is there any physical interpretation of those two groups? Uh, any roughly, group? they yeah. What what are the two groups? What do, what do those two groups represent? Yeah, roughly they uh, refer. They represent the uh, large consuming user, user and uh, low, low consuming user. Because we we just uh, do the one dimension uh, value, which is the uh, total daily consumption. So this is uh, uh, some experience from the industry. They 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 say the total daily consumption is the key value to investigate first. It's pretty square foot out. Or about how? <laughs> what happens to people in the small houses? Small houses will be if they uh, have in those two. Yeah, it will be okay uh, through the clustering method. Just to be clear, your data is only households or household, no, no industry. No industry. <laughs> so uh, now I will render some uh, numerical results. First, I, uh, I employ the gap statistic to infer the optimal number of the clusters. So uh, the first figure shows the gap statistic uh, uh, versus the number of clusters, and uh, it, roughly, it roughly points to the three. So we start with the three clusters. And uh, for the first uh, three clusters, we can see the convergence performance of our proposed algorithm. It converges fast and uh, it, ha it actually converges according to the proposed uh, clustering shift value. And uh, uh, for the table, we, we show the uh, strong separation index for the uh, three clusters. As we can see 
those uh, all the three sub, uh, strong separation index are relatively slow, uh, re relatively low. So, which means uh, all the clusters are separated uh, well. And we also realize uh, the uh, separated clusters. This is just a random sample of each uh, cluster with uh, 1,000 points. So, as we can see the clusters are well separated, and the separation uh, 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 the separation surface is not uh, linear. It's not a hyperplane it's a surface. So, which means our proposed algorithm is uh, is not linear. And uh, for this uh, figure, we, for the left hand side figure, we show the uh, those profiles of the obtained the three clusters, and we compare with the average uh, average one. So as we can see, there are low consuming uh, users and uh, high consuming users, and there are some uh, users in between. And uh, some of them have some uh, peaks. Uh, during the breakfast and the night, and some of them has uh, uh, peaks uh, during other times. So there are three uh, distinct uh, patterns. And we also propose our algorithm to be hierarchical or to be uh, iteratively split. So uh, as long as we have the three current clusters, we continue to we carry on to, uh, to perform the same clustering algorithm for the obtained clusters to s until we uh, to see the uh, strong separation index. If they are separated, uh, if the separation index are group, then we can carry on. As long as uh, one of the separation index, for example, is larger than 0.1, then we stop. So, and also the convergence of the subclustering is good, and uh, the shift is uh, of the scale 10 to the power of negative 3. So, it actually converges. And uh, for the second part, I will. Uh, present my second research work, which is, which is regarding the, uh, the pricing schemes and the sublinear approach. So uh, the overall feature for, the, for my second research work is that uh, as long as we have the user's power consumption, and uh, we can get some uh, big smart uh, metering data from different types of users, and uh, the, uh, we, can, we can form the user subgroups uh, by sampling from all the users and we use the uh, user type classification based, based on the benchmark distribution. Uh, and uh, we pro propose the sublinear method to uh, facilitate the computation. And then we propose a differentiated service accordingly with uh, differentiated uh, pricing schemes for different types of users. So overall is to gain profits. And uh, the, the objectives uh, for the second uh, research work is that first we design a differentiating user services model for profit gain competing based on the different types of users. And second, we, uh, we want to enable the service model uh, while it, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it will stay efficient, uh, even if the data is big and uh, it, ha it should have some performance guarantees. So the underlying philosophy of the second, uh, of our proposed method is that we can classify the user first and then use the corresponding typical user behavior instead of the actual user usage as the approximation and the estimation. Uh, in this way, we can fast the uh, computation and also save the uh, storage uh, capacity. So there are several advantages. Uh, first, it, uh, it allows us to be able to perform the prediction. And second, it uh, can achieve the fast uh, computation speed. And then uh, third, it can save the storage capacity. So. Well, we first uh, formulate, uh, formulate the, our differentiating user service model. So the the total uh, the objective is to uh, to get the large total bill gain as denoted by G. And suppose we have uh, n of users and we have l user types. And z is uh, is just uh, the same. Before it's a uh, user type indicator, and uh, f m is a uh, bill charge for the typical. AMS user, uh, AMS type user, and uh, PM is a low profiling expectation of the AMS typical user. So, if, uh, to, to to simplify my presentation, we restrict uh, two types of the users in total here. So, uh, the L is equal to two, and then the the formulation evolves into the bottom uh, the second bottom one. So, uh, and uh, since it's a summation. And uh, we can use the percentage. Uh, for example, we can use uh, alpha for the to denote the percentage of the type one user. And uh, so it can evolve into the 
uh, the bottom, final bottom one uh, equation. And the only parameter we need to estimate is the alpha and the beta, and they sum, sum up to one. So, and we also model the expense because uh, the company we are uh, cooperating with is an uh, energy trading company, so they do not produce energy themselves. They buy energy from the market, and uh, it will cost some expense. So the expense is modeled by the summation of the uh, user usage at each time instant, and, and the multiple with the uh, cost coefficients, because uh, at different time instants, the energy will be charged differently. And if, for example, it will be charged highly at the peak hour, and it will be charged less at the off peak hour. And then we have the total net profit gain, as, uh, as indicated here. And now we need to uh, to estimate the alpha and beta. So to uh, to estimate the alpha and beta, we use the uh, um, classification uh, uh, to to make the class indicator binary. So if the if the testing data if the testing user xi uh, is closer to the typical user one, and uh, it will be class, uh, it will have the class uh, indicator as one. Otherwise, the indicator is zero. So in this way, the alpha and beta can be computed here. And then uh, we propose some uh, algorithm quality measurement. So instead of uh, instead of like uh, the traditional algorithm, we do not. Uh, aims at solving with the exact solutions. We think that we can find the solution with some error and confidence, then it will facilitate the computation. So we say the uh, algorithm has a quality uh, epsilon and uh, delta. If, it, uh, if the estimated alpha, uh, <coughs> the difference between the estimated alpha and the true alpha uh, is greater than the error bound, the, the, uh, the probability is less than delta. Then, so if the probability is very is very small, then the quality is good. So first, we use the sublinear algorithm on, on the percentage calculation. So the underlying philosophy is that uh, there is no need of uh, every user to be taken into account for the computation. So for the for the large end users, we only subsample M1 out of this uh, total user pool. And then we perform the classification and compute the alpha as uh, illustrated. And uh, uh, so under this, uh, sorry, under this uh, uh, assumption, if we specify we want our algorithm to be bounded within this error bound optional one and uh, this uh, given uh, confidence parameters the other one, then the number of users we need to sample must be at least uh, this large. So as long as we set our, the number of users we sample uh, greater than this one, our uh, quality algorithm will be guaranteed by these two parameters. And uh, it is worthwhile to notice, uh, to, to know that this uh, subsample number is not a function of n. So it's a constant once we're given the parameters for the quality of the algorithm. So it's complexity is a constant. So this is a great achievement. Oh, zero. So usually they use k to indicate uh, if it's constant or false. If it's zero, no, if it's, uh, there is no cost. Uh, so one. So, uh, uh, second, we use uh, uh, we again use the sublinear on the classification and distribution uh, comparison. So, the underlying philosophy is that there is no need of uh, every data point uh, to be taken into consideration for the comparison. So, there is uh, some existing sublinear algorithm for the L2 test. Basically, the subsample from each of the testing distribution P and Q with the number of M2, and uh, it compares the uh, self collision and it compares neutral collision, and do some uh, calculation here and uh, make some uh, judgment whether they are causal or not. But it has some uh, disadvantage. So the, this is a theorem for the current, uh, current sub-linear algorithm. It has some uh, discussion 
uh, for the situation where the two actual distribution is within uh, epsilon 2 divided by 2 or larger than epsilon 2. But the drawback is that uh, if this true distribution lies within epsilon 2 divided by 2 to be epsilon 2, then there is uh, no discussion. The performance is not guaranteed. So thus I perform to uh, the solution to utilize the existing algorithm twice, but with uh, different uh, manner. So first, I will employ the traditional uh, sublinear algorithm and obtain the results as uh, S1. So it contains 1 and 0 for class, uh, for, uh, class 1 and class 2. And then, sorry. And then I employ the traditional uh, sublinear algorithms with uh, uh, twice, with larger of the error bound, and obtain the label result as uh, S2. And, uh, oh, and uh, also S1. And then we keep the label uh, S1, uh, label S1 in S1, and we keep the label 2 in S2. Uh, and in this one, uh, at the fifth step, I will remove, I will remove these uh, two label sets. But in this uh, situation, it will have some conflicts when the same data point is labeled as uh, 1 in S1 and 2 in S2. So for this uh, situation, we just randomly decided the uh, class labels. And uh, we output the S3 as the final class, uh, class fiction re results. And uh, through this, we propose the overall algorithm flow. So we first uh, perform the uh, algo percent to a sub to a subsample a small portion of the users for ca for classification, and then we perform uh, sub uh, sublinear algorithm uh, twice to subsample a small portion of each uh, user's uh, distribution data points. And through this, we can prove that uh, as long as we set the uh, the number of the data points be, uh, to, to to be sample to be large than this uh, given equation then we can guarantee the performance bound of the proposed algorithms. And uh, again, this, uh, this uh, number of the data point need to be sampled is a uh, constant. So it's not uh, relying on the uh, number of the total input uh, users. And then uh, we propose several uh, uh, numerical results to validate our uh, proposed algorithms. So the first one, we investigate the uh, estimate the errors uh, versus the uh, number of the uh, subsample uh, distribution points, and also we vary the number of the subsample users. And uh, as we can see, the more users we sample, or the more user, uh, the more distribution points we sample, the more accurate uh, we can achieve. And they are all bounded with the uh, uh, 0 0.05 error. So. This is the first uh, validation we made, and the second validation we made is to investigate the performance on the STN alpha. So we we vary the alpha to generate the phantom size, uh, phantom data size, and uh, we perform the uh, the estimation. As we can see, the these two lines, the purple line and the green line, are the error bounds, and uh, our estimation is bounded within this uh, error bound. And we also investigate our proposed uh, pricing schemes. So we compare it with the traditional uh, pricing scheme uh, we call the fixed price service, as a uh, uh, blue bar show here. So it, it is a flat rate for every uh, user and uh, every time every time instant. And then we also compare it with the differentiated charge, which uh, in brief is that uh, it's a greedy uh, mechanism to charge the every user with a higher higher rates, and uh, so as we can see, our proposed uh, differentiated service is a compromise of these two, so it will gain uh, profit for the utility company, but it's not too greedy. And uh, uh, we also investigate uh, the efficiency of, the, uh, of our proposed algorithm to facilitate the computation. So we, ve uh, we vary the uh, delta values. Uh, and uh, also the error bounds to see how, how many data we can reduce. And uh, as, we, as uh, we can see that uh, this, this is a percentage uh, plot. As we see that if we lose the uh, constraints of our proposed algorithm, for example, the delta values to be very large, which, is, which, is, uh, which indicate that we are not very certain whether our algorithm will work, it will, it will reduce almost uh, 0.9% of the data. 
and also we we also plot the uh, the reduced data amounts versus the uh, the Egyptian values, and we propose some uh, uh, table here to indicate the numerical results for the different uh, the different parameters, uh, the number of uh, users we sample, the number of data points we sample. So the original data set uh, for testing is uh, seven gigabytes, and uh, the minimum. Uh, data we need to evolve the computation is 0 0.061. So it, it reduced the uh, data amount uh, greatly. And uh, for the third part of our uh, of my research work, I will uh, describe the trajectory analysis. So the trajectory analysis is based on the tensor voting framework. So the objective of tensor voting framework is to infer the hidden objectives, uh, objects, which, uh, which is uh, gaps and broken parts, and it is based on the Gastro principles derived in the psychology domain. So it states that the presence of each input token implies a hypothesis that the structure passes through it. So if, we, if given the first uh, row of the pictures, uh, for example, the array of dots, uh, the incomplete regular shape, the smooth, uh, the broken smooth curve, then it's uh, human nature to infer the structures uh, was uh, shown at the bottom uh, row of the uh, of the uh, pictures. So we will infer the uh, uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines, and we will automatically infer those as uh, regular shapes and uh, smooth curves. So combination, and uh, based on this principle, we uh, encode the structure information. So. We use the normal space to uh, to represent the uh, structure information, and uh, the normal space is spanned by the normal vectors. <coughs> and uh, we use tensor to describe the uh, to describe uh, to encode the normal space. And tensor is nothing uh, but the the one that describes the linear relation uh, relation of vectors, and it can be uh, formed uh, of the by the odd product of uh, vectors or tensors or uh, linear space. So. Uh, we name the stick tensor to uh, to represent the surface element. So, for for example, for the uh, for the first figure, the the red the red one is the surface element, and it has uh, one normal vector uh, as shown by the blue color. And for the second uh, element is a curve element, and since the curve can be regarded as an uh, intersection with two planes. So each plane has uh, one vector. So therefore, a curved element has uh, two normal vectors. And the ball tensor is a point element with uh, three normal vectors. And uh, these are three uh, typical structure types in 3D world. And now we uh, consider a water point P on the surface as here. So it's on the surface. So therefore, it has uh, only one normal vector of VN at, and it's normalized. So now we want to investigate how the information uh, of uh, voting point P can influence the uh, voting point X. So suppose the normal is a single vector of VN with a saliency, uh, which is just a magnitude. And uh, the most likely smooth uh, connecting P and X is the arc of the oscillating circle. So we will draw the oscillating circle with, uh, uh, with uh, P and uh, X and pointing to the uh, centroid O. And uh, we will project the uh, VN to the uh, project the V to the normal space at P as a, by this uh, equation. So N P D is the normal space of the P uh, of the dimension D, and uh, the V C is a, is a uh, is a propagation of uh, P's normal vector to X. So it can be computed in this uh, function, and we also. Uh, want to model the decade uh, effect because uh, we don't want the uh, data point to influence uh, infinite uh, area of its uh, surroundings. So there is a decade function uh, denoted here with uh, three parameters, uh, scale and uh, some others. Uh, it's, uh, it's usually formed with Gaussian and uh, multiplied by the tensor, which is auto product of the VC. So uh, through this uh, stick uh, voting process, and uh, we can have the uh, voltage uh, tensor, and we can acquire, we can sum up all the uh, tensors acquired by the voting into one tensor matrix T. 
and uh, then we can perform the eigen decomposition of this uh, sum up tensors to extract the sentences. Then we have uh, then we can uh, we can arrange the eigenvalue from the largest one to the smallest one, uh, from lambda one to lambda three, and to rearrange this uh, equation. We have the uh, for, uh, formu formulation for the surface sentence and co sentence and the junction sentence, which is a board tensor. So uh, from here we can we can also discover the strength of the tensor voting method. Uh, it is capable to detect the outliers or noise because the three sentences are very, are very small, close to each other, then, then it will be classified as a noise. So it's robust uh, to noisy data. And uh, it can, uh, but if we directly employ this uh, to very noisy data, it will have a lot of uh, computation load. So the inference algorithm for the missing trajectories is summarized as this. So first we input the initial trace with missing parts. And then we perform the token refinement, and then we mark the sparse, uh, sparse voting region to define the potential voltage, and then we perform the tensor voting to infer the nearby structures, and then we decompose the result and add the determined voltage to the previous trace, and then we re we re-input the same trace and uh, iterate the whole procedure starting with the two, and we iterate enough times for just to exceed the uh, and output the final uh, trace result. So after we get the trace uh, with the complete uh, part, then we want to uh, analyze the tra trajectory patterns. So here I propose uh, several features for the trajectory patterns. First, I propose several special features. One is called the directional di distance. The second one is the trajectory mean. And the third one is the uh, Fourier descriptor. So for the Fourier descriptor, it's, um, it's basically for the 2D. Uh, each data point or each trajectory point has two coordinates, x, y, and uh, Fourier descriptor is just to uh, transform this x, y into one uh, imaginary or complex uh, uh, number. So x will be the real path and uh, y will be the imaginary path. And then it will form a sequence of this uh, complex number and we can perform the Fourier transform and to get the, get the uh, frequency components to indicate whether this uh, trajectory is uh, changing frequently or it stays like a straight line. So for the temporal uh, feature, I extracted the uh, average velocity. And for the scale invariant uh, feature, I proposed uh, fractal, uh, fractal dimension. So, uh, and then uh, to learn the patterns, uh, we use, uh, I use a logistic regression. And uh, pro probably we can use clustering, but uh, we have the label uh, Data. So I use a supervised learning method, and these two features just show the fractal feature, which is uh, has some self uh, similarity uh, properties. So fractal dimension is uh, is a one metric uh, to to measure the self similarity uh, and the repeating patterns exhibited in the objective in the nature. So it, it derives from the famous uh, uh, famous problem: How long is the British uh, coastal line? So there is a one, uh, one traditional uh, definition for the fractal dimension, which is uh, referred to as the Hausdorff dimension. And it's computed by, the, uh, by this equation. So uh, epsilon is a unit ruler for the measurement, and uh, n is a function of epsilon. And it's the number of objects uh, obtained by uh, continuously covering the whole graph using the epsilon. So maybe we use a larger epsilon to measure the coastline of the British, and we will get, uh, for example, 20. But if we use the smaller one, then we will get the number of the count as 100. Then we take the, uh, the least square regression, then we get the uh, factor dimension. So uh, now I will describe the numerical uh, results. And uh, first, I will describe the uh, experiment setup. So we have the human mobility data collected in New York City but, and also New Orleans cities and uh, by GPS and, uh, and we have uh, we first converted the traces into 2D binary images and then we pollute the images to have some uh, broken gaps and then we uh, vary the scale of the voting and we get the uh, results so 
as we can see, the first one is the polluted trace, and the second one is the recon reconstructed trace with a scale of 1. The third one is the reconstruction with a scale of 2. As we can see, the uh, reconstruction <coughs> is good, and uh, we have some uh, truth positive. Here, at least it has uh, as high as uh, uh, around uh, 90%. And we also have some victim uh, algorithm, which we mainly uh, complete all these uh, broken parts. So the one, is, uh, one advantage is that uh, the tensor volume does not require user input to indicate which part to be uh, referred or which part the algorithm should start to complete the trajectory. So the completion is uh, done uh, automatically. And uh, this one shows uh, uh, fractal dimension computation for the same curve as shown here. So the fractal dimension is uh, 1.0063, uh, so which means uh, it's, uh, most of the trajectory is, uh, is straight line, as we can see here. And uh, we use uh, the features described uh, before, input uh, into the logic re regression, and we get the uh, uh, training result and testing result here. So for the training accuracy, we have uh, around 80%. So the test, uh, testing accuracy will have around 85%. Uh, so and those are the number of samples? Samples, yeah. Because uh, each one trace is one sample. So we only have like uh, around uh, like 60 So for the training and uh, around 20 for the testing. So totally uh, around uh, 80. So if we have more trace, maybe we can achieve a better accuracy. And, uh, so now I will conclude my uh, research work. So for the theoretical side, uh, I proposed, uh, I investigated the clustering algorithms, and uh, within this domain, I proposed uh, normal distance measurement, and I proposed the uh, sloping rules and uh, normal clustering quality criteria. And for the smart grid systems, I proposed the pricing schemes based on the differentiating <coughs> pattern, and I proposed the normal sublinear uh, sampling for the online user classification and the big data challenge. And it's guaranteed with bounds and uh, with the theoretical proofs and numerical validation. For the application side, I, uh, I applied the decimoting to the in incomplete trajectory inference. And I also applied the fractal, fractal dimension analysis for the trajectory feature extraction. And there are several feature works. So, uh, Feature works is uh, to uh, investigate the deep learning model for the biomedical <coughs> imaging analysis and also develop a non parametric relation model for user uh, classification in the networking problems. And I, I will also extend the tensor theory for the data compression and the manifold learning. And also, I will investigate the initialization of the clustering analysis for choosing the optimal number of clusters. And uh, here is a publication list. and. Uh, Thank you so much for the defense.